Early this morning, Largo police got a 911 call from a man on 14th Avenue Southwest saying someone was shooting at his neighbor's house. The caller chased the suspect, and within minutes, Largo Police Sergeant Frank Parr confronted him here on Ridge Road. The call came into the communication center at 421. Uh, the first officer got on scene. Actually, the shooting occurred at 425, so the encounter occurred within four minutes. Sergeant Parr shot and killed 41-year-old Vincent Esposito of Oldsmar. Officers say Esposito wouldn't put down his gun. Turns out it wasn't real. Police say Esposito had a pellet gun like this. It's a replica of a 1911 45 caliber gun. Now this is a real one that's unloaded, but you can see that they both look just alike. And the shooting also happened at 4 a.m. when it was dark. And we now know more about how it started. Torn up. 40 year old Renee Salazar says she was Esposito's target. She didn't know it at the time and it upsets her to know it now. Because I'm a single mom and all the damage that he's done, knowing that he stopped me and I guess I'm glad that it's over with. Salazar says her friend dated Esposito months ago, but they broke up and he blamed Salazar for it. She told him that she didn't need somebody that was controlling and that's what he was and he, she wanted out and he couldn't handle it. For the months to follow, Salazar says her tires were slashed and the windows in her house and car were shot at. She reported it to police not knowing who it was. Then this morning, she says her torture came to an end. I don't wish anybody was dead. Just wish she would have chose a different path. In Largo, Anna Tatteras, Bay News 9. I'm here at the Orient Road Jail because this is where the three men were taken who were caught in the act with a million dollars worth of marijuana. And the horse, he was being used to transport it all. If this horse could talk, he'd have quite a story to tell. Hillsborough County investigators tell us this animal was involved in a million dollar cover up. You know, I've seen a lot of different ruses that people use, and this was a pretty good one. A horse helping transport drugs all the way from Tucson, Arizona. Two men allegedly rode 2,000 miles with the marijuana tucked away in the animal's trailer. The horse was supposed to hide the smell, but an off duty deputy stopped this trip in Plant City. He knew something was wrong and just watched. The officer became suspicious after spotting a man driving with this horse trailer in the middle of the night. He did a traffic stop and offered to help him find what they were looking for. He observed they were very nervous. So nervous, the deputy followed the driver to this house, recruited some help, then watched the rest unfold. Within the two hours, they saw these two individuals who were in the truck, along with the owner of this, or the person who lives at this house, unload about 50 bales of marijuana from the horse trailer into the house. Then deputies say the pot went from the house to this U-Haul, future destination unknown at this time. Neighbors say they saw the U-Haul parked in front of the house several times before, but they never knew this was going on. And I, I can't even believe that has happened here, right here, right there where the sheriff is. And it just, that's true gangster right there. I mean, you got to have a lot of nerves. You truly do. Now we do have the names of the three men who were taken here to the Orient Road Jail. They're Avon Falconer of Plant City, Vidal Espinoza of Arizona, and a Mark Wachowski of Arizona. Now we are told that they could be facing up to 10 years behind bars. As for the horse, he's been taken to the inventory warehouse, and deputies say he's doing just fine. I'm on scene in Hillsborough County, Dahlia Dangerfield, Bay News 9. A now empty home and even more empty hearts all around the South St. Petersburg neighborhood after the man who watched over their souls is tragically gone. Many are remembering a life taken too soon. I've been empty inside, very empty. The man Dorothy Davis calls a god brother is now just a memory. 49-year-old Stephen Mincy was on his bicycle just yards from his home when a pickup truck driver slammed into him. Here's how it happened. Police say around 11 o'clock last night, officers try to pull over the driver of a red pickup at Dr. MLK Street South and 22nd Avenue South. The driver took off, headed northbound, and around the 1300 block started sliding sideways. That's when police say it hit Mincy and threw him into a light pole. The pickup slid into the northwest corner of 13th Avenue South. 
finally coming to rest in this parking lot, striking several cars and a number of people. Police say the unlicensed driver climbed out of the car and ran. Many gathered around today trying to make sense of what happened. Oh, this is so hard. I'm trying to keep it together and also to remember a man who gave so much. He reached out to the neighborhood. You know, he looked after the neighborhood. He looked at after the peoples in the neighborhood, you know, and the kids, everybody. Not only to his neighbors at home, but blocks away to his neighbors at work. Stevie kind of helped everybody out around here. I mean, he looked out for the parking lot, looked out for the kids up here when the people would come up here and do their laundry. A loss for so many so soon. He was, he was like, you know, the cornerstone. You know, I really, I mean, he was the first one here and the last one to leave every day. Wow. So really going to miss him. Mincy had lived in this home for the last 20 years where he knew everyone on this street. He had been managing that laundromat for the last couple of years where, of course, he loved to socialize with all his customers. Reporting in South St. Petersburg, Carol Minvaca, Bay News 9. Trainer Willie Joe Settles will tell you that light heavyweight Ray Smith Jr. is the real deal. He's our future champion. Smith just turned pro. During his first two fights, he scored two first round knockouts. If you want to win a fight, you need to hit and not be hit. And that's Ray's specialty. He's got that rare blend of speed and power. But what is most important is his passion. My mom's been buying me boxing gloves ever since I was about six years old for Christmas every year. Two years ago, Ray walked into the ABC boxing gym as an amateur. For the past four weeks, He's worked as Jermaine Taylor's sparring partner, and his trainers say a title shot could only be two to three years away. As he's been fighting, I've been watching him, and he's tremendous, getting better and better each, day, each time. Not unlike Jermaine, who traded his first punches inside this gym. Now, everywhere you look, you see his name, the heralded middleweight champion of the world. But for Ray, he's more like a brother. When you see him coming from a small town, Little Rock, Arkansas, and I'm from the same small town, and you, once you see him do it, you know it, it's possible. After squaring off with Jermaine for the past month as his sparring partner, Ray knows that Jermaine is not only blessed with speed. He's strong, too, for a middleweight, you know. <laughs> It, it, you wouldn't think a middleweight would be that strong, but he's real strong. There's no question that Jermaine has opened doors for Ray, and he promises that when his time comes, he'll come out swinging.